Hello, my beautiful people. It's your girl, Tina Marie J. Welcome to my channel. So if you watched my last video, I have spoke about Matthew's chapter 18. I basically broke it down from verses 1 through 20. And um, in that chapter, we talked a lot about how the ICOC and the ICC use this specific chapter along with other scriptures in the Bible, of course. But we spoke specifically about Matthews 18 and how they use it as a way to control members, to make you fear leaving, to make you feel like it has to be this church. You have to be here. You, If you leave, then you're leaving God, all of that stuff. So we basically spoke about that. And um, in the mist, which I'm going to just make this whole thing into a little mini cult series, um, but in the midst of me doing my research, I came across this term I've never heard before and I looked into it, I did my research on it and I thought it was super interesting because it definitely does go with what cults do. It goes with their tactic, it goes with basically the way that they control people and it is called psychological invalidation. So the definition of psychological invalidation is to dismiss or not make valid. It is the act to knowingly invalidate something or someone. Therefore, psychological invalidation is the act of rejecting, dismissing, or minimizing someone else's thoughts and feelings. If you have been a member of any cult, really, it doesn't matter if it was Jehovah Witnesses, Scientology, the ICOC, the ICC, any cult, you could have been with the Moonies. They will use psychological invalidation. They will try to invalidate your feelings if you ever do approach the leaders with a dilemma or with some sort of concern that you have pertaining to the church and how it's being ran and how the doctrine is being put out. When you try to express your concerns or you express the reason that you've decided to move on and to no longer be a member of this cult, typically, the people that you express these concerns to, they will dismiss, minimize, and reject your feelings. They could do it in a harsh way, they could do it in an easy way. So from my personal experience in the New York City ICOC, I was rejected, I was minimized, and I was definitely dismissed during my membership and even when I chose to leave. This is something that I feel everybody should know about, which is why I want to make a video about it. I think that it is important, whether you're joining a cult or you're joining the greatest church in the world, we should have some sort of knowledge on these different behaviors and and these different ways and, and, and knowledge on these different terminologies that associates with a cult that way we can know what we're getting ourselves into because that will just help us down the long run to not have to run into any issues now i have read an article i'm gonna post the article down below it was kind of a long article but it was super interesting i read through the whole thing but i took out bits and pieces and i just jotted down some notes so i'm just gonna go over the important bits and pieces i took down but like i said you guys could always overlook the article yourselves too so a damaging form of emotional abuse causing greater psychological distress, making the respite fill with self-doubt. This is what psychological invalidation does. It is a form of emotional abuse because you are neglecting. You're causing the other person to have self-doubt in themselves. When you are being psychologically invalidated in, let's say, the ICOC, for instance, or the ICC, you begin to feel like you don't know how to trust yourself. That is a situation uh, issue, I should say, that happens to most people who end up leaving cults that I speak to. They don't know how to trust themselves. They have so much self-doubt, even making the simplest decisions, like deciding if you're going to buy the house or not, or if you're going to move to this state or to that state, or deciding if you're going to marry this person or if you might not want to marry this person. Any 
kinds of decision big or small you will deal with a lot of self-doubt and after leaving a cult is not the best time to make any major decisions in my personal opinion if you're gonna if you're gonna have self-doubt and you're gonna always have that cult in the back of your mind of what they're they'd say if they knew you were gonna go with a certain decision i feel like the best decision that you should make is to stay away and to work on developing yourself and learning these things that way you can know how to become stronger in that sense mentally so that you don't have to run into these situations anymore emotional abuse denies emotional repertoire that makes people wonder and complexly human so emotional abuse that leads from the psychological invalidation it causes people to feel like robots basically it makes you it takes away from what makes you human it takes away from the ability to question the ability to wonder it denies that that's something that we all do it's a human thing to do and when you're in a cult specifically and you're dealing with this type of emotional abuse because yes the ICOC and the ICC definitely are emotionally abusive. You are in an abusive relationship when you join these cults. They take away your ability to realize that you have every right to question things. You have every right to be curious about certain things and they take that away and this is something that is just in us it is in us from birth it is a human way of being so now this is where it takes a little turn i i kind of really want to get into this but i want to try to keep it at like a basic minimum as much as possible because i have been studying a lot about narcissism empaths and highly sensitive people so if you are a highly sensitive individual which means that you are sensitive to a lot of things it's not just someone who takes things personal it's someone who actually feels extra kind of like an empath if you are a person who's highly sensitive or you you could also just be very sensitive in general this could be your human nature you may have been someone who suffered abuse in the past suffered some sort of trauma dealing with anxiety this can be a very painful and degrading experience according to this article if you are involved in a cult and you are not able to express your emotions your fears your feelings without feeling invalidated without feeling like your 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 situation is being minimized your experience is being minimized which it happens to me all the time on this channel people constantly do the psychological invalidation but i don't pay it any mind because i know what my experience was and so i just simply don't care but i have learned to get to that point and you can too once you learn these things and and you educate yourself and you do research on these different things and the behaviors you're able to see how it affects you psychologically and it becomes so much easier to deal with the nonsense that people will try to bring to you so basically we've spoken about uh in some past videos we spoke about narcissism which i can also try to link here for you guys i spoke about narcissism in cults the narcissistic behaviors and so a narcissism versus a highly sensitive or the mentally pained which i will call it this will definitely affect you in a cult because you're dealing with nar narcissistic behavior and you may already be a highly sensitive person and a highly sensitive person or an empath cannot be invalidated psychologically in that sense because we have to be able to express ourselves we have to be able to express who we are and how we feel when we feel it we we just have to and 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 to be invalidated is to say our feeling is not real and we feel extra empaths highly sensitive we feel more you feel what you don't want to feel so you do start to kind of feel like well maybe i am crazier and maybe i am just overdoing it and this is the problem with the narcissist and the highly sensitive relationship and when you're involved in a cult, you are in a relationship with someone who is displaying narcissistic behavior. Typically, when psychological invalidation is happening, it is genuine and unintentional. But if a person is aware that they're invalidating, it is their way to manipulate and control. They're denying the individual's experience. They try to make them question their thoughts 
and their feelings. It's a power move used to suppress their feelings and it is a form of gaslighting. It leads into gaslighting. So people often ask me if I think that people in the ICC and the ICOC know what they're doing, if they're purposely trying to be controlling and abusive and all of that. I say I think it could be both. I think some people are doing it because they know what they're doing not that they're looking to hurt someone but they honestly believe that they're being genuine but at the same time they kind of know what they're doing like they know i could control this person if i tell her to move into my house and i can watch her i i'm the one who got her here i'm the one who baptized her i'm the one who did studies with her if she moves into my basement and i charge her this little bit of rent I can know her her whereabouts, I can know what she's doing, I can know she's having quiet time. It's a tactic, and, and in that case, that's messed up. But then I do believe, I'm sorry for all the noise outside, someone's freaking car is going off, it's always loud here. In the case where I believe that it's not intentional, I think that people in this cult just learn how to be cult members. You don't come in here as a cult member, but there are people in this church who are, for instance, leaders who are natural born leaders in terms of their personality. There are people that could be supervisors, they could be bosses of other people. And you put people like that in charge in a cult and it could be very chaotic. It, it can get out of control and then in that case, the empathy is, is lacking because it's like they don't realize they're going really hard. You're becoming controlling at this point as a leader. You're calling me, you're coming to my house, you're doing way too much. And in that case, I feel like at times it can be on purpose. They know how much pressure to put on a person and they know how to make you stay a member. I had leaders like that in the church I attended and I saw it firsthand and I was like, there's no way that this person doesn't see what they're doing or how they could be hurting this person. There's no way that they don't see how their manipulation is making the person fear leaving. So, uh, like I said, this becomes a form, it turns into a form of gaslighting. They will try to imply that you're overreacting and they will start blame shifting. Blame shifting when they start to shift blame on you. And it's a way to try to get you to back out. They will say anything they can to get you to back out. When you're in the church, they'll shift blame on you. The blame shifting will happen a lot when you're a member of the church. You'll have certain situations. For me, I was in the marriage ministry, so I did experience a lot of blame shifting personally. When there was a situation with me and my husband going on, the women would pull me to the side and, and put a lot of blame on me and tell me, well, you're not praying enough for your husband. You're supposed to be helping him. And then the whole conversation would be over and we would go home and I'll be like, hey, so what did the guys tell you? And the things that he would tell me they said to him, I'm like, that's it? That's like, they didn't get in on you? Like, I almost got ripped up. You know, it's blame shifting. They, they shift the blame to take away and they'll shift the blame away from themselves just to put it on you. If you decide that you want to leave, they may shift blame and say, well, you're not leaving because you're not happy with the doctrine and you don't feel it's right and you think what we're doing is wrong here. You're leaving because you just don't want to accept the truth and you want to do what you want to do and you want to live your own life and live in sin. That's why you're leaving. Goodbye, we'll pray for you and just close the door on your way out. Intentional invalidators defend their actions with accusatory statements and victim blaming and here are some of the accusatory statements you may have heard it could be worse I'm sorry you feel that way I'm sorry you feel that way is one that really irritates my, my soul. It just makes my skin want to just climb off. Saying I'm sorry you feel that way after I've just displayed all this emotion to you and I've expressed to you some things that I don't feel is right and why I don't feel it's right and instead of you speaking to me about it, you say I'm sorry you feel that way, you, you're 100% dismissing everything I just said. You may hear you're too sensitive, you're overreacting, uh, yeah, that's that's clearly a, a way to get you to kind of just shut up and just move on. 
If they say I'm not discussing this with you, that's just blatant disrespect. That's just, I slam the door in your face, I don't want to talk to you. We're not talking about it. it it's, it's, not even, it's not even done because it hasn't even begun. Just get over it. Just let it go. You shouldn't feel that way. It could be worse. So, um, one of the statements that I didn't see on this list, but I will mention, which I think we statements that I didn't see on this list, but I will mention, which I think we spoke about in a recent video, is when they say to you, it's not that bad. No church is perfect. Nobody is perfect. We're all imperfect people just trying to praise and worship God and get to heaven. Every church is imperfect. You have to trust god not man when they say that to you it is it is one of the most common things that you will hear you you'll forever hear they'll forever be saying that that is a way of invalidating because you're still not you're still not trying to find a way to resolve or correct the problem you're still going around what was just told to you you're still beating around the bush instead of just trying to sit there in it and really think about it and reflect and think, all right, what exactly is going on? Like, what is the real issue? What can we do here? You're going around it and, and really it's, it's a very contradictory thing because what I noticed that, that this church, specifically the ICC and the ICOC do is that they will act like they're perfect. You know, they forbid that you join any other church or you even visit another church. They'll act like they've got it all together and they'll act like they're the only ones. They'll honestly tell you. Some of them will honestly say straight up to your face, we're the only one true church. Don't listen to anybody. We are the one. They've said it to me. So you guys are perfect. But then the minute that people leave and people start addressing all these problems and making videos and all of that, all of a sudden it's, oh, well, we're not perfect human beings. We're just like anybody else. All right, so if you're not perfect human beings, why do you feel that it's such a it's it's such a requirement to have to be a part of your church to get to heaven? Like if we want to know the truth, we must go to your church cuz your church, your church actually goes by the literal context of the Bible. So we have to go to your church. But it's like they 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 go with what suits them for that moment, whatever the circumstances. The circumstances people are leaving the church, all of a sudden they're not perfect, they make mistakes too. If they want you to become a member, you gotta become a member because we're the perfect ones, we're the only ones. They don't know how to choose sides. I honestly, I feel like the people in that church is very, majority of the people are very fake and very two-faced, but I don't think that they realize it. It's not like they're purposely trying to be like that. But anyway, let's move on. So these statements will lead a person to feel alienated, confused, inferior, worthless, and problematic. In other words, you'll feel like you're just divisive at this point. And this is why people have to stay away from you because you, you've become a problem at this point. This contributes to emotional disorders and mental illness. So, uh... Mental illness, they spoke about depression and anxiety and how a person with depression and anxiety dealing with psychological invalidation, how it can worsen the depression and the anxiety. And if you have any other emotional disorders, like uh, if you're bipolar or if you're schizophrenic, mental health for me has always been a really big thing. I've always been an advocate for mental health. I went to school for mental health. I've always loved psychology and, and how the brain works. And this is because I've dealt with anxiety and depression since I was around, I think it started around between 10 and 12 years old, anxiety and fear of things I didn't need to have fear of. So one thing I, I definitely learned after leaving the ICLC is that if you have any kind of emotional disturbances, any kind of mental health problems, you may not do well in a church like this. You may be able to fake it very well, but you may not do very well. And if a person does do well and they flourish, then great. Honestly, I would love to hear that people are truly flourishing and doing great, but also that they know how to have a mind of their own. And I, I mean, 
it's very hard to be able to do that in this type of church but if if that is what happens then great but it can make it very difficult for you if you're being invalidated in a cult but now we're just speaking about cults in general if you're being invalidated psychologically in a cult and you are someone who does have mental health problems or you're dealing with any kind of emotional disorders it makes it difficult more difficult for you than the average person who doesn't typically deal with these issues because it's all a mental game and it's confusing and it's frustrating and this is why a lot of people who end up leaving deal with depression and majority of the people who deal with depression after they've left a cult already was dealing with depression before they even entered the cult and it just got worse when they left or it may have gotten worse as they were a member that's something I do want to speak more about on this channel is mental health and how being a part of a cult can really affect you because this is another thing I feel is important that a lot of people should know about. If more people knew about these different things and more people were educated, which I wish I was too, or even thought to become educated on these things, then I feel like people won't join cults as easily. Because the thing is that people don't understand it doesn't take a special type of person to join a cult. You can join a cult and have no idea you're in one. I took a class in college all about cults. And so we learned about cults and, and how some cults are not necessarily bad. And how to see the difference. And the whole time I'm thinking it's a good thing I'm not in a cult. But then at the same time I'm seeing, I'm seeing different things. And I'm like, we kind of do that. But you know, it's for God. It's for God. So... It's like I knew, but I didn't know. And it's just good to be educated. It's, it's good to be educated on it. It's good to know what you're getting yourself into. So if you do join a church, or if you join any kind of a religious movement or organization, you're aware of the signs to look out for. And it's good that we know about ourselves and we know what we can and can't handle at that moment. Um, you know, like I said in previous videos, the ICLC are really good at recruiting people who are on a certain type of life journey, entering a new phase in their life. They like to recruit young people who just start in school because starting school, you may be away from home, you're living on campus. It's a whole new life. It's a new change in your life. And everyone knows that new, or most people know that new changes in your life can, can cause anxiety and it can even cause depression if things if things are kind of taking a bit for you to adjust to. They'll get people who were uh, recently married or people who are in a relationship together who are going through relationship issues. They're so quick to want to get you. Me, it was very easy. I was a young mom of two and I had just gotten married. I had just moved out of my mom's house and I moved in with my husband and his family. I was going through a whole bunch of stuff. I, it was rough, you know, living with my in-laws for five years. It was terrible. I hated the experience. I was only 23 years old. I started my life at a really young age. I literally started adulthood at the age of 19, which is when I got pregnant. So I was a very easy target and they use a lot of these situations in my life as a way to pull me and would say, remember, God got you through this, God got you through that, God got you through that. And if you leave, God's not going to get you through no more, Tina. You're lucky you're still alive because I done got myself in situations. So that always kept me. And that, that always made me feel like I can't express myself. Because if I express myself, they're going to minimize it. They're going to try to make me suppress it. And I'm, I know myself. I'm a very expressive person. So I have no problem coming on camera and speaking my, my thoughts and saying how I feel about certain things. I do at times second guess and I do at times think, okay, should I even mention that or should I not? Because I try to be careful with how I say things and what I say. But at the same time, like I said, because I know who I am and I know how I operate, being in this church was a huge battle for me. So now being an ex-member and looking at it from the outside looking in rather than the inside looking in as I was before, I could see it more. And so the more people that I speak to who do deal with these problems, I could see it within them and I could understand why they feel the way they feel and I could, I could relate.
in a lot of ways. I'm sorry guys for rambling, but I just feel like these are important things that need to be addressed. These are important things need to be discussed. So if you like this video, make sure you do thumbs it up so this video can get out. And if you like this channel, do definitely subscribe. I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you check the description box down below. I love you guys all so much. Enjoy, take care, and be super safe.